Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is January 8th, 1956, and the title is Doc's Revenge. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy. Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed, thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Chester, you going out on a sick call? I don't usually carry my bag when I'm going for a beer. <laughs> Why, did you want something? Oh, no, no, no. I, I just thought I'd stop by. Well, you can walk with me at the stable if you want to. I'm going out to Jake Morrison's. His boy has the ague. Oh, no, ain't that a shame. Seems like everybody's getting the ague these days. Had a touch myself last week. Oh, that's so? You know, most folks swear by Osgood Caligog. But I found me some new stuff. Mm. Professor Curtis's original Mameluke liniment. Mameluke? Mm -hmm. Look, it says right here on the bottom what it's good for. Uh, Guaranteed to cure cramps, pains in the joints, Mm -hmm. sore throat, frosted feet, Mm. rheumatism, lumbago, old sores, bites of insects and reptiles, mange, salt, rheum, dysentery, diora, and clarion. Well... A regular medical arsenal all in one bottle. Hmm. And it's doing you good, isn't it? Well, of course, Doc. Well, then how come you're still walking around like a buffalo with ring bone? Well, maybe I still got just... Oh, so you come to me for some free advice now, didn't you? Well, I'll just give you some free advice. Chester, stop eating all that salt pork and dried beans. What? And put some fresh greens in your stomach. Why? And stay away from the saloons for a few days. Oh, now, Doc. A little whiskey and sugar never... Oh, a little buddy, whiskey. I... Oh. And most important, take all those patent medicines you got and use them for cleaning your boots. Oh, They're I... just the thing to kind of toughen up the leather. And as far as I'm concerned now, Chester, you can... You... What's the matter, Doc? Doc, what is it? Something about that fellow that just rode by? Yes, Chester. Well, you were staring like you seen a ghost. You go ahead, Chester. I'm going back to the office. The office? What for? To get my gun. Your gun? Why? I'm going to kill that man. <laughs> more pleasure, packs more pleasure, Chesterfield packs more pleasure, because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. 
Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild yet they satisfy the most. <laughs> Dillon? Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what's the trouble, Chester? You better come on out the plaza. Maybe you can stop him. I'll stop who? Doc, he's going to kill a man. Doc? Doc, yes, sir. He's gone and got his old army walker and strapped it to his belt, and he's marching up front street looking for the fellow, whoever he is. All right, let's go. I tried my best to stop him, but he wouldn't listen. Oh, you should have saw his face, Mr. Dillon. He means business. I never seen Doc like this. Who was the fellow, Chester? I never seen him before. Well, you know what it's all about? No, sir, but I do know one thing. I'd hate to have to face that old walker pistol, even if it is an old cap and ball. Why, it'd blow a whole clean through a buffalo. Matt. Oh, wait a minute. It's Kitty at the door of the long branch. She's waving. He must be down there. Yeah, come on. Matt, it's Doc. Is he in there, Kitty? Yeah, and he's got a gun. He's threatening some man. Yeah. All right, thanks, Kitty. And if you won't come outside, I'll, I'll kill you where you stand. I told you I'm not going to fight you. That's up to you. But I'm going to kill you whether you defend yourself or not. Doc. That's enough. Matt, you stay out of this. Happens to be my business, Doc, when a man threatens another man in this town. When the other man doesn't want to fight, won't defend himself, it could turn out to be murder. You think I don't know that? You must want to kill him pretty bad. I've wanted to for a lot of years. Why? I've got good reasons, Matt. But you won't tell me, huh? No. All right, what about you? I could say I don't know. I'm just a stranger passing through town. But I know. There's no good reason for murder. I guess he thinks there is. Do you? Not many men would say yes to that, no, would they, Marshal? But you won't defend yourself, huh? I won't draw with him, no. If he's going to shoot me, he'll have to take the consequences. I'm not a fighting man, Marshal. I'm a miner. Me and my partner here, we're just traveling through Dodge. We don't want any trouble. That's right, Marshal. We made our strike out in Arizona Territory, and we're headed back for St. Louis. Oh, we was just minding our own business, having a quiet drink when this fellow comes along. What's your name? Clem Maddow. This is Ben Bartlett, my partner. We don't want no trouble. You won't have any. Go on back to your drinks. I'm going to kill him one way or the other, Matt. And you can't stop me. Look, Doc, you're taking an awful lot for granted. Maybe you think I won't throw you in jail for threatening murder. Maybe you think because you're the town's only doctor that you can get away Matt, with... listen. No, you listen to me. You're forgetting a lot you ought to remember, Doc. For instance, your position in this town. You ought to be setting an example instead of acting like an ordinary gun hand. More important, your responsibility... Another man's life may be his own risk, but yours belongs to this whole town. And a good many lives depend on you. So you calm down and you put that gun away. <laughs> hey, you sure told the old fool off. You <laughs> shut up! Didn't... Huh? Matter. I don't know anything about you. Maybe you're what you say, but if Doc doesn't like you, that's good enough for me. So you get out of Dodge while you got a whole skin. And you stay out. Why should we? We got a right... And you take your partner with you, Maddo, because I don't like him. You're a marshal. We was going on tomorrow anyways. Right on tonight, as soon as we stock up on some grub. All right. 
Yeah, Where did Doc go, Chester? Well, up the street, probably back to the office, like you said. To Matt, me. look on his face when he went out. Yeah, I know, Kitty. Well, I'm going up there. Matt, you had to do it. Yeah. I'll see you later, Kitty. Yeah, sure. Mr. Dillon, that Maddo, he, he didn't seem like such a bad fellow. No, he didn't, Chester. I'd sooner be bad of that partner of his, that Bartlett. That one seemed like he could be a hard case, all right, without half trying. But Maddo wouldn't even defend his son. No. But I don't think that was because he was afraid to. No, that's true. Seemed more like he just didn't want to fight Doc. Didn't seem mad at all, like Doc. More like he was sad. Maybe a man with a guilty conscience, Chester. Mm. Yeah, I guess so, Mr. Dillon. Uh, you better go on over to the office, Chester, huh? Uh, I want to go up alone. Yes, sir. He didn't show up at Delmonico's for his supper, and it's way past his usual time. I've been watching the office, and his light ain't come on. Of course, he could be sitting up there in the dark. I just tried again. He's not there. Uh, Mr. Dillon, you don't reckon he might have just left town? Run away? Because of what I said? Not Doc. He's too bullheaded for that. Most likely, he's out there somewhere with an old pistol of his looking for Matto. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. Doggone it, I don't know what this town would do without Doc. He can be awful irritating at times and all, but... Hey, that, that was a shot. Yeah, come on. Marshal! Marshal! Over here! It's that Bartlett, Mr. Dillon. It's Clem, Marshal. I think he's dead. All right. Everybody stay back. Give me that lantern, will you? He was shot in the back, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. It looks mighty bad. He said he'd kill him, and he's done it. Did you see who did it, Bartlett? No. We was loading horses, and I just turned to go back into the store for another load, and I heard the shot. Anybody else around to see it? Why, no, but... After all, Marshal can't be much doubt who did it, can there? Everybody in town heard him threaten to kill Clem. You know, just because the man's a doctor doesn't give him any right to go around murdering people. That's enough, Bartlett. The important thing right now is to try to save this man's life. Where are we taking him at, Mr. Dillon? There's only one place, Chester. Yes, sir. Now, where have you been, Doc? I was down by the stable. And I heard a shot. It's matter. He's still alive. But he was shot in the back. Oh. I see. <laughs> As if you didn't know. Doc, I can understand you getting into a fair fight, but not shooting a man in the back. Why, you just gonna let him walk away like that, Marshal? Doc! He's going to die if he doesn't get attention right away, and you're the only doctor in town. You're going to let him die? Where do you think I was going, Matt? Bring him up to the office. I'll have everything ready. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> 
packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild yet they satisfy the most. <laughs> through, Doc. I don't know. I've done all I can. It's good. You really didn't have to stand here and watch, man. I know I didn't, Doc. That's not why I stayed. I thought maybe I could help. And I wanted this. The bullet? Yeah, that's right. You see, Doc, I knew you didn't shoot Matto, but I had to be able to prove it. How did you know? Because Matto was shot in the back. I... I, I tried to tell you out there, Doc, only you, you didn't understand. But you did have me kind of worried when you started to walk away from him. Why, it, it never occurred to me to walk away from him. I guess being a doctor is a lot more important than any personal grudge. Well, I reckon I'm under suspicion, aren't I? Doc, uh, look at this forty-five bullet. Took it out of Maddow's chest. Now, I couldn't have been shot from that old pistol of yours, could it? No, no, no. I guess it couldn't. And... Well, then who did it? Well, that's not hard to figure. Oh, Bartlett, Chester, you can come in now. How is he, Marshal? I think he's going to be all right. He ain't going to die? Say, that's mighty fine. Well, I was plenty scared with this man operating and all. You needn't have worried. He's a doctor and a good one. You see, he didn't shoot your partner. He didn't? No, we have the proof for that. Uh, who did? Now, there's only one other man in town who'd have had any reason to. A coward who saw a golden opportunity to double his takings of a mining strike by shooting his partner in the back. You just keep your hands away from your belt, Bartlett. Well, I want me to get his gun, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. Well, you're crazy, Marshal. You can't prove this. I think we can, Bartlett. Anyway, we'll just wait and see. All right, take him down and lock him up, Chester. Yes, sir. Come on, you. Doc. Looks like Mado's gonna come too. Yes, maybe. His color's better. You know, it's funny. I, I don't hate him anymore. You mind telling me why you ever did? Yeah. It happened a long time ago. It had to do with a girl we were both pretty fond of. She chose Mado, but he jilted her. She drowned herself. I swore I'd kill him. And I carried that hate in my heart all these years. That's not good for a man. No, it's not, Doc. Well, you brought me to my senses, Matt, in that saloon. Thank you. Well, I looked all over for you afterwards. Well, I guess I was out of Jake Morrison's. I, I remembered I had to treat his boy for the ague, so, so I did. <laughs> Doc. Oh, yes. Yes, Clint. Uh, now you just take it easy. That's right. You lie still. You're going to be all right, Doc. 
I wanted to tell you I'm awful sorry for what happened. Maybe sorrier than you. I loved her. I would have come back if I could have. Well, I guess I never even thought of that. Well, we've both been sorry too long. It's all over now. Thanks. Now you just go on to sleep. You get your rest there now. And the world will look a lot better to you tomorrow. That's it. That's it. Well, good night, Doctor. Good night, man. moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accurate, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Firm and pleasing to the lips. Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, cowboys with six months' trail pay made the frontier a good place for a crooked gambler. Next week, one comes to town and gets cured of his bad habits the hard way. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M, superior taste and filter. L and M, America's best filter tip cigarette. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story of the Western Frontier when Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's gun smoke.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.